Hi everyone, welcome to Connected Rheumatology. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Today's topic is something that I know a lot of people are interested in. The weather's getting colder outside and that means one thing, joint injections. We'll be talking all about what are they, do you need them, are they gonna cure your arthritis? So stick with us and we'll get right into it. Hi, like I said, I'm Elizabeth Ortiz. I'm a board certified rheumatologist and internist based out of Dallas, Texas. I have spent the past 10 years of my career in rheumatology working in academic medicine, and I am now building Connected Rheumatology not only to treat patients, but to focus on educating. Because I really think that if we're educated and we can communicate with our healthcare providers better, then that will lead to better health. So today's topic is probably going to get me in a little trouble with some of my colleagues, but I want to talk about joint injections and do they really help with arthritis? Now, before we get into answering that question, we first need to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. So joint injections or intra-articular injections are exactly what they sound like. Intra is inside, articular meaning joint. So we place a needle into the joint capsule and inject some sort of medication, some sort of therapy. Um, I'm not going to be talking about draining a joint or for those of us in sports we might know draining the knee that's where we stick a needle in the joint and actually take out fluid and that's a whole other thing and we do that for all different kinds of reasons so we're not really going to talk about that today today we're talking about putting a needle in and injecting something and just to clarify because i do get this question a lot the needle is not going into the bone so a joint is a bone next to another bone. There's fluid and cartilage in the middle and all of that is encapsulated in a capsule. <laughs> and so the needle goes into that, does not go into the bone. The second thing we need to clarify are that there are different types of injections. And this is very important to understand because sometimes when doctors are talking about joint injections, they just, say that, they just say, oh, we can do a joint injection, but it's important that you ask, well, what type, like what exactly are you thinking of injecting into my joint? Anytime you get anything injected or put into your body, you need to know exactly what it is. And there are different types and we're gonna go into them. And then lastly, you need to think about and talk about with your doctor, what are your goals? Are you considering a joint injection for pain? Or are you wanting treatment for your arthritis? Because, spoiler alert, it doesn't treat the arthritis. These injections don't do anything to stop or slow down the progression of the arthritis. They're really just for pain. So if you get told that you have mild to moderate arthritis in any particular joint, but you're not really having any problems with that joint, there's really no point in considering an injection. The injection is really just for pain control. All right, so let's get into the different types of injections. The first type, and the type that most of us, if we've ever had to talk about injections, this is the type of injection we've heard of, is a steroid injection. Now, I'm not talking about those roids that get us jacked up. Um, what I'm talking about are corticosteroids. These are a very potent anti-inflammatory medication. Um, if you have asthma, you might have been on them. If you've ever had a severe allergic reaction to anything, you might have gotten a dose of steroids. We're now hearing all about them because they have become part of the treatment regimen for people with severe COVID. Um, so these are very powerful medications and are basically considered the standard of care for joint injections. They're kind of the first entry point into joint injections. There are different types of steroids that all have different uh, profiles as far as how long they last and what the risks are. But, you know, the truth is, although they are considered that first entry point into injections, there are still a lot of questions unanswered and still a bit of controversy about whether or not these injections help at all. Not all doctors and not all medical organizations agree. You know, questions that haven't been answered. How many injections should one person get? 
Is there any damage to the cartilage? Um, how best can they be utilized? Um, you know, these are things that need to be discussed with your doctor and the decision to move forward with an injection is really done on a case by case basis. So for example, if I see a gentleman in his 40s with mild to moderate, uh, let's say knee pain when he exercises and we see that he has some osteoarthritis on an x-ray, I don't, not 100% sure I would pursue an injection. That type of individual who's that active would probably get a lot more out of physical therapy without having to take on the risk of cartilage degradation from the steroid. On the flip side, if I see a woman in her 90s whose main activity or her daily activities around the house, but now is having a hard time doing them because of arthritis pain, then that might be a good person to get an injection, especially if she has any other medical conditions that really keep her from being able to take our normal pain medicines or even seeing a surgeon. Second type of injection is hyaluronic acid. Now, if you're like me, then you hear hyaluronic acid and you're like, ooh, I like that. Put that all over my face. But <laughs> that's not what, what we're talking about. We're talking about injecting it into the joint. And these injections, I think came out maybe about 15, 10 to 15 years ago. And when they came out, man, there was this big push for these types of injections. We all thought this was going to cure arthritis, solve all our problems, make a us all a million bazillion dollars those reps were pushing on the doctors hard and you know as with most things the more we use it and the more patients that get it the more the shine kind of wears off there are individuals who get a good benefit from these injections you can get these about every six months but they just they're just not the magic injection we were all hoping for and it really turns in usually to the type of conversation where the doctor might just say, well, we can try it if you want. Now, I don't mean to be flippant about it or make it seem like these injections are riskless. Anytime you use anything with a needle, you are introducing risk. You are introducing the risk of bleeding or infection. And in the case of these hyaluronic acid injections, there's what's known as the post-injection inflammatory syndrome, which is basically where your joint, let's say your knee, blows up like a basketball, it gets hot, red, and tender after one of these injections, and it's super not fun. Very rare, thankfully, but you need to be aware that this happens. Another type of injection is PRP, or platelet-rich plasma. And if you are an athlete or really into sports, you most likely have heard of this type of injection. It became popular maybe, gosh, I'm losing track of time, eight years ago, eight, 10 years ago. Um, and again, had a lot of excitement and push about it. Um, what it is, is you go in and you have your blood drawn. So they put in a, a needle and they take out about a vial of blood and they put that blood in a centrifuge. And a centrifuge is one of those machines that just like spins it really, really fast. So they spin it fast and the spinning action the, helps the blood separate into different parts. And so what you're left with is this layer of the PRP, the platelet-rich plasma. And then we go in, we suck that PRP out, and we have it in a syringe, and then we inject it right into the knee or right into the joint that's causing the problem. Again, it sounds like super cool and futuristic and fancy, but it just hasn't panned out. The data on this is just all over the place and just hasn't really been proven to be a benefit. And case in point, it's insurance companies will not cover it. So you're usually going to be paying out of pocket for this type of injection. Um, it probably has a bigger use in soft tissue injections, but again, that's still yet to be proven, but things like tendonitis or bursitis, it might be more beneficial, but time will tell and we'll, we'll have to see. And then finally, we have stem cell injections. Now, if the data was confusing with corticosteroids and hyaluronic acid and just lacking with PRP, then it is a total cluster <laughs> with stem cells. I mean, first of all, these research bodies don't even, they're using the term stem cells to mean different things. There are different types of stem cells. And if we, meaning the scientists doing the research, 
aren't even talking about the same type of cells when they use the word stem cells, you can see how far we are from being able to make any kind of judgment about whether these types of injections work. Um, they're just, you know, they're just not the cure to arthritis that we're all really hoping for yet. I mean, we'll see. Um, I think that as with most new things, the scientists and the researchers eventually get their act together. They get on the same page. They're all using the same definitions and then they start conducting, um, conducting some legitimate science to figure out if it works or not. All right. So those are the types of injections. So I need to get back to that initial question, right? Do these joint injections help? Well, if you've been listening, you most likely are going to guess that my answer is maybe. I know it's such a cop out. I know. I'm sorry, but it really is a decision that's made on a case by case basis. This is made based on your lifestyle, your medical conditions, what your goals are, which joint we're even talking about because we approach each joint differently. You know, these are all questions that you need to think about and thinking about them before your, your appointment is going to help. What are your goals? Are you trying to win the Olympics? Are you wanting to go on vacation and be able to walk around Europe? Or are you just wanting to walk around your house? What is your lifestyle? Are you sedentary or are you active? Do you have any other medical conditions like diabetes or heart disease? Do you, which joint are we talking about? Like I said, we approach each joint differently. Now, these are questions and discussions you need to have with your own doctor. And obviously every situation is different. But in my opinion, no injection should be discussed without also talking about movement, physical therapy, and weight loss if appropriate. These are things that have to be done when you're trying to put together a long-term strategy to joint pain. Now, I completely understand the argument, but how am I supposed to exercise when I have pain? I get it, and that is a legitimate question. And in those kinds of situation, doing a joint injection to see if it helps with pain to bridge you to being able to work with a therapist or do more movement is a completely legitimate strategy and that can be discussed with your doctor. So those are my thoughts about joint injections. There are different types and you really need to know what's, ever, what's being injected into you and know exactly what you're hoping to get out of it when you're going into these injections. You know, we're coming into the cold season, otherwise known as injection season for rheumatologists. So I thought this would be a good video to put out there, get you guys thinking, hopefully use it as a springboard to do some more research on your own and talk to your own doctor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any other videos we put together. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and at connectedrheumatology.com. We have a lot of other resources there. And thanks so much here at Connected Rheumatology. We talk about rheumato rheumatology, immunology, diet, movement, and wellness. Cause you know, it's all connected. Thanks, have a great day. Mm -hmm.